untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Welcome everyone to my first Dominaria United draft, part of the early access event courtesy of Wizards of the Coast. Okay, pack one, pick one, our rare a Leyline Binding, kind of an expensive removal spell, but uh, if you actually look at Domain giving you a discount, it's often going to be four, maybe three mana, and even cheaper in a dedicated Domain deck, so it's actually pretty decent. On the same level, I would say, as the Battle Hymn, another great removal spell, can gain four if kicked. Uh, Raph, one of the more impressive uh, legends, I think, if you can uh, easily enable it with a couple tokens, some other non-creature spells. So, you know, the two removal spells are great, but so is Raph. There's also Slimefoot's Survey to maybe enable Domain by grabbing some of those off-color dual lands at common. And then there's some other great commons between Lookout, Interference for the blue-red spells deck, Gardener, a Death Touch creature that helps you ramp, and uh, some other fine cards here, Repossession Prophecy, probably are going to end up wheeling, but I've been happy with these as well. So we'll give uh, Raph a try here over the removal spells. We have Soul of Windgrace, powerful card if you can cast it, providing value by getting a lands back and giving you all sorts of abilities. Not the best pairing with Raph, admittedly. Whereas Protect the Negotiators would fit perfectly, not only making tokens, but also counting as an instant or sorcery for Raph. Uh, Iconoclast can be great in red-green if you can kick it and play it early. And uh, what else? Amplifier for blue-red spells. There's uh, red-white dual land, which I would also be happy to take. So we can take a Soul of Wind Grace, go down the 3-4 color Durdle deck path. But I kind of want to see if we can make a more streamlined, maybe two-color deck and see how Protect the Negotiators works out alongside Raph. Okay, Treaty is a nice way to ramp and fix your mana, so that's kind of tempting here. Cavalier's just okay. Missionary is actually quite good even without Kicker, but with Kicker it's... Uh, Totally awesome, getting a creature back from the graveyard on a 2-3 lifelink. So I guess Missionary could be the pick here, and then we may splash a bit of black. But 2-3 lifelink for 2 is still fine. Can maybe wheel a stall for time, which would also play well in this archetype. Take up the shield, a nice trick, but should be able to pick it up later. So a lot of decent options. I'll try Missionary. Ooh, Sten to go with Raph. Another blue-eyed legend. This can give our instants and sorceries potentially a discount, but also works with enchantments and planeswalkers. Can pay three mana to flicker it. So can maybe chum block and activate it. So it seems like a fine pickup here. Other good cards. We've got the blight pile as a good blocker that can drain the opponent to death. If you've got a few defenders out, to inferno, double strike, or copy a spell. Nice if you can copy a removal spell. And uh, got Furious Bellow, the new Sure Strike, that also lets you scry one. War Brute using the new Enlist mechanic, so you can tap another untapped creature that's not attacking, that doesn't have summoning sickness, to add its power onto your Trampler. And having Trample means you're more likely to hit the opponent for a bunch of damage. Okay, we've got Astor, sadly not many artifacts, or rather vehicles or equipments in this set. So you're just not going to have enough targets for it consistently. Uh, there's another Protect the Negotiators. Would also love the Beachfront as mana fixing. So pretty close here between Protect and Beachfront. We probably end up with enough playables where I just want uh, better mana. And we'll also make it slightly easier to maybe splash black if we have some blue-white dual lands. Can more easily add a Swamp or two to the deck. Sleeper could be an interesting card on the splash in kind of a black-white token strategy. There's another survey for the domain decks. Reinforcements, also quite awesome. Making two 1-1s for two mana. Can have some good synergy with Raph potentially pumping the team or needing to have two creatures to tap to draw. Also works well with uh, Protect the Negotiators. Can keep up counter spells and then still flash in reinforcements. So I think we'll give that a try.
Next, nothing much in blue-white. Scavenger, better in a domain deck, but yeah, still a 3-2 in a two-color deck that essentially lets you scry two, although can't keep both on top. And then there's one of the expensive payoffs for domain that becomes cheaper the more types you have. Sentry for for reach has been pretty impressive, just as flyers tend to be the ones closing out games, which can be quite grindy otherwise. There's a Rada, good alongside endless creatures that can tap it to pump something else. The Figment's better in a more aggressive deck, could still be okay alongside Wrath, as it can maybe attack and then still tap. So it does have a bit of synergy, I suppose. Or we could take an off color bog on the off chance I need it for domain. I'll try the Figment. Our deck might end up being kind of aggressive. And if there are a lot of board stalls, then, you know, unblockable seems like a nice way around it. We can try Phalanx. If we make enough tokens, it can become pretty cheap to play. Otherwise, Librarian. Pretty similar to the Scavenger in a two-color deck. So we're seeing a lot of green, but I'll happily take another Phalanx, and then we'll be on the lookout for more cheap token makers to enable them. So this blue-white start seems pretty nice so far. We'll need some more non-creature spells to enable Wrath to draw, but shouldn't be too difficult. And... Uh, yeah, take up the shield, a fine trick. Take my Librarian now. And I guess we'll Rare Draft here. Okay, second pack. Not the best pack for us to open, sadly. IV, eh, pretty narrow card, not too many ways to enable it, and also off-color. We've got Faith Bonder, which could be okay as an Analyst creature, which can get in for a bit of damage. Um, can maybe wield the Figment anyway. Treaty would have been nice had we been a green domain deck. I think that ship has sailed. Vanquisher's Axe could be okay alongside a Figment, for instance. But I'll try the Faith Bonder. See how the Analyst mechanic works out for us. Ooh, nice. Donatha Benalia's Hope. Even without any extra abilities, a 4-4 First Strike Vigilance lifelink is already great. So I'll give that a try. Prayer of Binding would have been the next best card here, and it's also very good. Let's see, does Wrath care about instants and sorceries? Yeah, so I guess enchantments don't enable Wrath at the very least. Uh, Cavalier, another great common for this deck, making some tokens. Also has Unlist, but we'll take Donatha, hope to wheel either... Cavalier, maybe like a Drake would be fine. Even Interference as a cheap cantrip that can enable Wrath would be fine. Can take a Flyer or Faith Bonner, I guess Drake would be the better Flyer than Cavalier. Is it better than Faith Bonner? Probably already have quite a few 2-drops. Yeah, if we can pick up the one mana aura, that would be great, as it has synergy with Donatha, synergizes well with our flyers and some blockable creatures. So we definitely want to pick that up. Wow, another Sten. Is that a pick? It is legendary, so I don't really want to draw two of them, but eh, it's a pretty good card. Acolytes, kind of underwhelming if you can't kick it for green. And there's another beachfront as well, and a negate. So a lot of options. Kind of like the negate too in this deck. Although another beachfront would be excellent. Yeah, let's grab beachfront, improve our mana. And then if we wheel negate, I'll be happy. Sky Knight's awesome. 2-2 two -two flyer with enlist. Can deal a ton of damage. Otherwise, we could take another Protect the Negotiators. Not too interested in the wall. And list creatures can also attack past it pretty easily. Urza assembles a Titan, sadly one of the worst rares for limiteds, as there's 
Not a ton of synergy and limited for uh, Planeswalkers. So I'll grab an Impulse as a cheap cantrip that can enable Wrath and maybe some other cards. Alternative would be taking the Red White Lands, although I don't really have a reason to right now. Still potentially wanting to splash black for the Missionary. So if we find a blue-black or black-white duel, I'll happily take it. What about another Wrath? Okay, that's definitely a Legendary I don't mind having two of. Passing a Cavalier, which would have been nice too. And then a Darkar Wastes would be fine in this deck too. Probably better than Beachfront if we don't care about the basic land types. Okay, blue-white tokens with a Wrath. Sten could use a bit more removal. And um, just ways to enable Wrath in general, so some cheap instants and sorceries. But Protector seems good too. Another Flyer. That can pick up a couple extra points of power and toughness. And a wield an axe. Don't know if I'll play it. Cavalier or Timely Interference. Cavalier would be a nice curve filler. Interference enables Wrath. I think we need some more cantrips than token makers, but it's close. I guess uh, Interference is a reason to maybe want a red in your mana base. Uh, Faith Bonder maybe over Cavalier, although looking at my curve, might prefer a 3 drop actually. And Heroic Charge could be fine. Negate as well. And Herbalist plays well with Enlist. We've got two Enlist creatures so far. Yeah, I'll try the Heroic Charge. And another Figment. Our deck seems kind of aggressively slanted. Next up, Plaza of Heroes actually has a bit of synergy with Wrath and Sten. Can give Hexproof and Indestructible until end of turn. Otherwise, what are we looking at? Destroy Evil, perhaps? Yeah, I don't think I need to play Plaza. Upside's pretty marginal. I think I would prefer either Negate or Destroy Evil. And, uh, yeah, I think we need more removal. Temporary Lockdown is very good against us. As we have a lot of cheap threats, didn't think I want to take it here. Um, Codex, kind of too expensive in a two-color deck. There's an Aquifer for the Black Splash for Missionary. And then hope to wheel in a gate. Or another Destroy Evil, although I doubt I ever want to play two. I'm glad we picked up the dual land since we're not going to struggle to get enough playables. But uh, some nice mana fixing is always welcome. So the axe is unlikely to make the final cut, I would say. There we have Espionage, is just a divination. Still works pretty well in our deck, even without Kicker. Mystic really wants to have Kicker to be an amazing card. And then Stall for Time would have been okay too. Introduces the stun counters, which... It's kind of like freezing a creature, but you can potentially freeze it for multiple turns. There's a few cards that do that. Uh, and yeah, we're probably not deep enough in black to want Sleeper or Aaron. Another Sky Knight I'll happily take. Over Aquifer and Peaks, which would also be fine. Ooh, Peacekeeper's not bad either. Uh, what else? There's Reinforcements, which would be quite decent. And a Vanguard can also pump the team, although we have two copies of Wrath to do the same. Peacekeeper, probably the best individual threat. Still hoping to wheel a negate or two. Assassin's Scatter's nice. Phasing of Jalfir, kind of a tricky card to evaluate, could actually be okay in our tokens deck. But I still don't think it's very good. 
yeah, Asset Scatter looks good here alongside our author instance. And then now, do I want a Shore Up? It's not bad with our Sky Knights. Enables Wrath. Alternative would be Peaks or another Figment, which I'm probably not playing. Herbalist would also be decent with double Sky Knights now. But I think we wouldn't mind a cheap piece of uh, protection. I yeah, could see Relic doing some work with our three legendaries. Although probably no room for it since we're not ramping all that much. Take another charge. Can even use charge main phase to pump a creature and then sink all that extra power into an enlist creature anyway. Try and negate now, I think, even though we might wheel another one and I could take plaza. Not going to be too sad if we don't get a negate. Ah, there it is. Okay, so we've got an interesting deck here. I might have to make a decision between focusing more on kind of the control elements versus focusing more on tokens and maybe phalanx. Stall for time should be good either way. A librarian can probably go. Scavenger. Don't know if I need to take up the shield or if I prefer shore up as a cheaper trick. And got another negate and a vanguard. Vanguard seems decent. Do I want double figments? Don't think I do. Missionary were unlikely to play with kicker. Although I could toss in like a swamp as well, since we have plenty of other mana fixing. So we've got two black sources for missionary and potentially espionage. Sten is not going to discount a whole a lot of things, but eh, we've got a couple two mana spells we can maybe reducing cost. Between take up the shield and shore up. Probably prefer take up the shield. Don't think I want both. And then one negates, one essence scatter, interference and impulse as enablers, protect the negotiators. So we've got a nice sprinkle here of uh, counter spells. I'm not sure if I need a heroic charge. Since we're not making a ton of tokens, admittedly, Yes, I think a Phalanx can go, and Heroic Charge can go. We're more into like playing Flyers and pumping them with Enlist as opposed to necessarily killing with tokens, but we do have Wrath and uh, Vanguard to potentially pump the team if needed. So two more cuts, this is 17 lands. So what are the final two cuts? Maybe a Griffin Protector is our weakest for Mana Flyer. Uh, but I wouldn't mind playing all three. Donathal looks good enough. And then Phalanx will be able to play around turn 4, turn 5. So maybe Destroy Evil is just too conditional. I think I'm still happy with 17 lands since we have quite a few Mana Sinks with Double Wrath. Vanguard can kick some of our spells, and we have some card draw as well to be able to double spell. How good is Figment going to be? It's not the best with counter spells, so maybe that can go. Counter spells are still good with Wrath, but Figment really wants to have a cantrip like Interference or Impulse so it can attack. All right, this seems fine. And then eight, nine blue sources plus plaza. Eight white sources, maybe can switch blue and white. There we go. All right. Yeah, we're not going to kick interference. It's just a one mana blue instant. Okay, we're on the play. Hand seems acceptable. Turn two. 
Can flash in reinforcements to hit for a little bit more. Although I guess on the flip side, if we keep up reinforcements, we can keep it up alongside Negate. Have the black for missionary, so that's great. I'm not super likely to want to negate this early in the game, however. Yeah, close call. I'll try and play Faith Bonder. And now we can keep up Impulse as well, but probably going to play Reinforcements. Cannot unlist a summoning sick creature, so no point in playing those out. Cavalier's fine. So we'll just attack into it with everyone. And then could main phase impulse to hit my land drop and still keep up negate if we do. If we don't, I might be better off just passing. I think I should main phase impulse and dig for land four. And then keep up my other tricks in the opponent's turn. Could also just play missionary for two, honestly. But having a bit of late game could be nice. And that's a chum block. Hmm. Is there a sweeper incoming? Well, as nice as some of these cards are, I think I need the land more. And we'll keep up our various two mana instants. Okay, was fine. So I can enlist with a Faith Bonder attack and take up the shield if they block. Or I can just play a Griffin Protector and make that play next turn. And there's probably no harm in attacking since. They wouldn't be able to uh, kill my Faith Bonder. Can only enlist one creature. And then if they kill Protector, I can get it back with Missionary. Opponent on a multicolor domain deck, perhaps. Cavo attacks. Yeah, I'll probably take it. Small chance they have a sweeper, dealing five to everything, in which case I can save myself a bit of damage. But don't really want to lose a one-one otherwise. Yeah, that seemed kind of obvious after they jumped earlier. Still seemed tricky to keep up negate there, but that's fine. Now Sky Knight versus Missionary get back Griffin. Probably get back Griffin. Alright, out. And now Protector, keep up our tricks. Could attack into Rada and then take up the shield. I'm gonna take a slower approach. And the next turn Sky Knight will grow Protector. And we'll keep up enough mana to play defense. Alright, that's a large Iconoclast, so we'll double block Rada, see if there's a response. And we can always respond with one of our instants. If not, I'm probably okay with the trade. And then hitting for two seems worth it, since we gain two life as well. 
We'll just race the Iconoclast. So we can protect our team with two different spells. Hopefully draw more creatures or like a Wrath would be awesome. It's also going to be an interesting question which to play first if they try and kill my creature. I guess the extra counter would be helpful in a racing situation, although so is lifelink, which is better if I use it in my turn. Right, Bog Badger for Menace. And stall for times perfect here. So I'll use that in the opponent's turn, I think. And then just hit for four. So seeing the power of Enlist. Okay, so still have our protection available. Sojourner is not what I wanted to see, a large ground creature. Can keep attacking with a Sky Knight, but uh, could be in a bit of trouble now after drawing two lanes. So I'll take four. And tap. Phalanx is nice. Can still cast both spells. So what if I were to attack with both without enlisting? Hit them down to 5. That would be at 8. I can block and protect if needed. And then take 7 down to 1, which would not be lethal. Could also take up the shield now on Sky Knights. Just so that I'm more likely to present lethal next turn, but with Enlist on Phalanx we should still get there. So I think it's fine to send in both. Although there are a few combinations of spells that could get us, or maybe if uh, Indestructible doesn't pan out. But we also have Negate, so... I guess another Badger, for instance, would be bad. Flame Sage is fine. Don't think it matters here. Colossal growth. So I can take up the shields, that way I keep negate for a potential one mana removal spell. And the lifelink should uh, keep me alive as well. And we've got Negate Backup, and I can even... Hmm, never mind. Sadly can't attack with a Vigilant creature and still unlisted because it specifically says non-attacking. But, uh, yeah, we can just attack with a Sky Knight and listing the Phalanx and hit for 7 with Negate Backup. Sweet, close game here, on to the next one. On the play with a fine hand. Could use a few extra lands off the top. Even though we just picked up our swamp, I'm happy enough playing missionary on two. Ooh, nice seraph. Right. 
So next turn we could already start drawing if we want to. Opponent ramping with Gardener. And a negate the draw. I think we pass and then probably stall for time, whatever they ramp out to tap it down. Draw with Wrath. And keep things going. Okay. Now, reinforcements plus negate would be nice, but there's no guarantee that they're going to cast a non-creature spell. So I might want to just play Sky Knight and then hit for three. If I had an Asa Scatter in hand, it would be a different story. But we can potentially tap the two creatures we get from reinforcement, since it doesn't care about summoning sickness on Raph's ability. Right, it's your opponent killing our lifelinker with fires instead of Raph. Stuck on single white, but we'll make it work. Can just play a Danitha here and list Wrath hit for three. Yeah, I'm quite impressed by and list especially on flyers. Kind of suspected that to be the case. Yeah, going Vanguard keep up protection is nice, although if we can untap with Denitha and then keep up protection is going to be much better, but there's always a chance that goes wrong, of course. Right out. Right out plus Enlist is also quite scary, so we might be in a bit of trouble now. Opponent's going to be able to pump Baloth for... A ton of extra damage. Just need to find an answer to Baloth. Opponent's at 12. Yeah, now we probably play Vanguard, keep up Negate. Can't keep up, take up the shield, sadly. Or I could pass with both, you know, Negate and Reinforcements, but let's get the Vanguard in play. Then we can maybe activate this as well. So no one lists, just on the off chance I can draw with Wrath if I negate something. Alright. So we're gonna take some damage here next turn, which I'm not too happy about, but probably the best we can do. Can also gain some life with take up the shield. So let's say we were to draw a planes next turn, I could take up the shield my Sky Knight, activate Vanguard, pump it for another 4, so then it would hit for 8, which also starts adding up. But Baloth hits us for 10, and another Enlist creature here, Warbrute. Interference. At least this one doesn't trample, but they can now enlist with a Warbrute instead. Or also just pump Warbrute with Rhyla's ability. So I probably need to draw a planes, although even if we do now, is that really going to help? Might have to just keep everyone back and then hope to somehow survive the attack between my two tricks. Although finding a planes would still be useful. I don't think I can tap. Nope. Alright. I don't know, maybe this is still my best shot. Hope they don't pump the Trampler with Rada, and I get to jump with Vanguard and take up the shield.
Okay. They're not dead thanks to lifelink. Points at 8. If I activate Vanguard, they seem dead. If they have nothing. And just like that, out of nowhere, Sky Knight steals the win. Awesome. On the draw, missing white mana is going to make it tricky. Eh, off to a slow start, but I'll keep. And then Cavalier can go. I'll take an untapped land over the top. Put in blue red. At least we've got our black for missionary. Which could just play at turn two, although the matchup setting up to be kind of grindy. Right, activate Spicker, discarding islands, maybe looking for seconds mountain. And lightning strike on Wrath. Okay. Let's have a look with Peacekeeper. Okay, we've got Garna, missing Black for it. Mystic, which they're probably going to play once they're empty handed. And a Colony. Eh, probably just name Garna, which is already the most expensive card. Could also name something completely different, but. This seems fine. Make sure to name the right Garna. And the longer it takes them to play Garna, the longer they're going to have to wait to play Mystic to get full value. Of course, they could just discard Garna with Picker, but then we're also happy. So no removal spells in sight. I think I still play Protector instead of... Playing take up the shield here, but that's an option. And then next turn play Phalanx, which can attack past Colony. Figment's fine. And mistakes that are maybe gonna give up on Garna here. Yep. Alright. I think I'm still waiting on Missionary to play it kicked to get back Wrath, which we can then combine with Take Up the Shield to draw. And then for now, it's probably just Phalanx attack for three. Ooh, nice. The Storm Runner. If they've got a removal spell left in hand, could be bad for us. Although, that'll buy us some time. Can sense Protector and Phalanx. I'm fine if Phalanx trades for Figment and Picker, I think. And, uh, yeah, we'll probably stall for time kicked. Could try and get back Wrath first to draw even more cards, but can't play Kick and play Wrath this turn, which is probably what we want to try and set up. Yeah, taking up the shields, tempting. I think I should just let that happen. Can also missionary back the Phalanx if needed. I might actually tap the Colony instead of the Mystic. So Peacekeeper can attack. I 
And then now we can missionary plus ref, I believe. There's a black mana. And a thrill to keep digging. They've seen a lot of cards, down to 16 in library. They were maybe hoping to copy one of those with a Storm Runner. Thrill discarding Squee, which can be reanimated next turn. Okay. Interference is nice to go with Raph if we can maybe do that next turn. So I don't have to play Raph right now. Could keep up, take up the shield, and then protect Raph next turn. Phalanx also an option, but I think we want the extra cards. Upside of playing Raph now is that we grow Protector. I think we should be more careful with Raph here. So I'll uh, play it next turn when we can keep up, take up the shield. Only drawback would be an Essence Scatter. Although I don't know if their deck is really an Essence Scatter type of deck. Can block Squee with Missionary, so that's not a concern. Get to untap. Yeah, let's see if Raph resolves. He does. And between our two tricks, I feel comfortable attacking. Vigilance also plays well with Raph. So we can still tap to draw. Maybe the missionary attack was a bit greedy. Lightning Strike. I'll take up the shield, and then I can... Interference. And then tap 2. And then if they ambush Missionary, I can still at least prevent it from dying. Even though we give up a bit of Wrath value. The gate's nice too. Although now Storm Runner gets to untap and maybe double something. Geyser. So just gonna bounce main phase. Have a lot of flyers in hand, so if we can deploy those, we can potentially close out the game. Just wanna make sure we don't get run over. Literally. But we're still at 20 at least. Putting down to 10 cards in library. Ooh, Balmore, scary. Alright. So I'm going to want to keep up Negate if possible, so just play Protector and pass. At least they already cast a ton of cantrips earlier, which would be quite scary now with Balmor and infantry in play. Trying to steal our griffin. No thanks. And then what to tap? The raf, and then probably the missionary. Since we can block Balmor. And trade for Storm Runner. Good double block. Which honestly wouldn't be terrible, but the flyer seems more important here. With our opponent at 6. We can also pump our team next turn if we want. Also gives Vigilance. We want a nice counter spell here. Alright, so if I were to pump the team, I still have 3 mana available, which is enough for negotiators. And then, how would they line up their blocks? I guess they could eat Missionary and Wrath pretty easily. So I might be better off adding more to the board. Let's say play Sky Knight, pump Protector, 
protector attacks. And then still keep up negotiators. Or I can play Drake so I keep up both Wrath and Protect. Don't know how relevant Unlist is going to be. Also have to watch out for Squee. Alright, on the wall chumps, opponent takes three, that happens. The extra toughness of Drake could also be useful over Sky Knight, so we'll see how this works out. But yeah, we could be dead to a couple spells. This will give us a total of six creatures. And yeah, that's probably worth countering. Do I tap anything? Seems a little risky. Time for Squee. Although they seem dead on board here. At least two damage of flyers goes through, plus at least one more on the ground. So this attack is inconsequential. Yeah, Raf did a lot of work. GG's. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems fine. Just need some spells to go with Wrath now. And then turn two, what's the play? So we want to save this. Let's see, if I stand on Sorcery now, then uh, turn 4 we can Wrath plus Espionage. Yeah, that looks good. Assuming we draw land. Next turn Vanguard. Opponent also has their own Plaza. Don't think they're likely to block, but if they do, so be it. I really want a land off the top that's untapped. Well, now I might have to espionage just to hit my land drop for the turn. Oh man, so close. And uh, not gonna expose Wrath to removal just yet. Play a Faith Bonder. Opponent does have a Sentry with Reach and now a Rona. Okay, that's gonna start draining us. And a Snare Spinner, good against our flying plan. So we've got our work cut out for us. Now I could play a Wrath and then pass with the plan of stall for time. Although if we can play it kicked, it's going to be so much better. Faith Bonder we can send in with 4 power. If I pump with Vanguard first, it could attack with 7 power. Although still not enough to kill both Sentry and Rona. It's probably fine sending Faith Bonder for 4. And then 
could play Sky Knight, although it just dies to Snare Spinner. So maybe play Wrath and then I can activate Sten if they attack. Sure. Bone and Traits, that's fine. Loom speaker, okay. And a gardener. So defenses are set up, but hopefully we can get some extra cards going with Wrath. Let's see, is this beginning of the end step? I messed up. I should have activated this before the end step. Now it's going to be gone for an entire turn cycle. I wanted to change it to instant. I guess that's fine, we'll just untap, and then uh, picked up reinforcements, not bad. So now, what's the plan? Pass with Sten and reinforcements, or do I play Sky Knights? Keep up reinforcements. Yeah, I guess we'll just build up our board here. Hope their last card's not removal for Wraith. But if it is, we can still get it back with Missionary. Once we find Black. Which I guess is not that likely. So we could see a land turn into a creature. Or opponent getting back Rona discarding two lands. Sure. Ooh, and Donatha. Let's play Donatha. And then next turn maybe just pump our team with Wrath. No attack with the Sky Knights because of the Reach creatures. And pumping with Wrath gives Vigilance, so it's better than pumping with Vanguard. Ooh, that's a nice top deck. Although hopefully find black mana for Missionary soon. All right, there we go. So I think we'll pass, stall for time, tapping Rona and Sentry, or maybe both Reach creatures, and then next turn set up some big attacks. The 1-1s one -one line up well against the Death Touch creatures. So we've got the board under control for now. They'll swipe my Vanguard. And yeah, they couldn't kill Wrath because of our legendary land to give Hexproof and Indestructible. Do I even need to tap something down? Are they maybe planning to attack with Rona? That's an aggressive attack. Yeah, we can soak up some damage or just double block Loam Speaker. And then take the rest next turn, pump with Wrath. They can activate Plaza, I guess, on Rona, which is what they were maybe trying to set up. So let's see, if I kick Missionary, still have enough for Cavalier and then maybe pump next turn. Maybe now is actually a good opportunity to get in. And then no point in enlisting. Alright, that does it.
Okay, we're on the draw with a double ramp opener. Seems fine. Hopefully find another non ramp creature so we can tap two of them after we interference. But yeah, very impressed by Raf so far. The only uncommon I give an A in my set review. And potentially rightfully so. Can play Missionary first. Although, hmm, now I won't be able to play my 2-drop and interference to draw right away if needed. Alright, never mind. Never punished. Although I don't think we're attacking. I guess if I attacked, I just interference for the the clean, I guess, 1-4-0. Although then I wouldn't get to draw the extra card. And I really want to draw the extra card. Well, this is perfect. I guess we want to block first. Now I get to have my cake and eat it too. Okay. What's next? Griffin Protector. And then next turn we can maybe double spell. Don't need to espionage right now when I get on the board. And then, don't know if they'll trade Gardener for Missionary, but I'm fine to offer that trade. So I'll attack first. Would make my Phalanx a bit more expensive, but also helps the Phalanx get in in the first place. So next turn we can maybe double spell Faith Bonder Phalanx. Ooh, Defiler of Flesh, that's a good one. One of the rare Defiler cycle. Not as scary as the green one, but still a real menace. So, yeah, Faith Bonder plus Phalanx grows Griffin twice and sets us up to maybe pump the team with Wrath. But now we also have nice instants and sorceries to draw cards with if needed. Necromace. Take five. Even though a double block would not be bad for us, I think we can leverage Raph nicely here. Yeah, maybe double block Raph Phalanx would have been fine, since we have a backup Raph in case they kill it. For single green, they could give plus two plus two. Would be a potential concern. Or a tail swipe at instant speed. Fighting one of my two creatures. Looks like they have a tail swipe. Well, glad I didn't double block. Mm, how about we Drake and then Impulse? Do I have to Impulse now? Just if I want to hit my land drop. Um, which seems fine. Probably not blocking anyway. And then I could leave Wrath back, since we have another. Sure, in case I want to jump for some reason. <laughs> okay, well, that's a nice choice. Alright, found our black mana to kick Espionage. Hit for three. Points at 11. So, two Trunk Clock in the air if we pump with Wrath. Although might kick Espionage next turn and take a slower approach. And then probably take 9. Root Walla. They're missing the black permanence to trigger Defiler and protect the Negotiator's awesome. Okay, so we can get their last card. And then still keep up, protect. I 
I guess the only issue is them casting a black spell still triggers this. Even if I counter it. So we'll have to think about which creatures to attack with here. Don't think I tap. So let's decline for now. And we got a Battle Rage Blessing out of their hand. Okay, so... What to do here? Could also just attack with Faith Bonder and list a flyer and then keep an extra flyer back. Kind of like that idea, actually. Make use of the Vigilance. Alright, so now we can double jump if necessary and potentially still present lethal by playing Wrath and activating next turn to attack for 6 in the air. Opponent sends the team. They can pump this for 2. I guess I just jump Necromass. I mean, I can tap them out, which is probably good enough here. If they activate Root Walla, next turn I can play Wrath, still have 5 mana to activate and deal lethal. So sure. Alright. Kind of sad I didn't get to cast my Protect the uh, Negotiators to get a little bit more value on the way out, but so be it. Playing another creature would also do it. Pumping the Griffin. Awesome. Keepable hand. Stun naming instance. That's the scatters. Nice too. Think I'm still uh, tapping out here. I can keep it up turn four perhaps. Alright, that's a good one too. Can help them loot. Hoping for a raff off the top would be awesome with these discounts. Alright, Sky Knight's not bad either. So we could take up the shield. Um, I think I just tap out for Sky Knight. And then next turn I can maybe enlist and take up the shield. Opponent's not going to be too concerned about my creature since they have a drake to block. Another creature that's been quite impressive as a common lines up well in the format, I think. Right, Fraxian Rager is a nice one. And there's Wrath, right on time. Okay, so we can play Wrath. And then... If I were to attack with Sky Knights, enlisting Sten, I would no longer have two untapped creatures if I also want to attack with a Drake. So I could just attack with Sky Knights, and then if they block, I can take up the shields. And once I enlist, they can no longer kill with a one mana removal spell, which would otherwise be a concern. Because we would go up to six total power and toughness.
Ooh, nice. Alright, so we can even kick this if we want. Discarding a turtle. Looks like a very controlling strategy. So we might be better off with negate over essence scatter, but still happy to have both. And now that the flyer's gone, Drake and Sky Knight are gonna quickly run away with the game if they don't find an answer. Can activate Wrath next turn as well. Blight Pile's fine, since we're planning to win with our flyers anyway. And a barricade, alright, so they're going deep on the defense here. That works, I don't think we need to interfere. Cavalier. So now probably fine to play Cavalier and keep up our counter spells as opposed to activating Wrath. And then we can enlist with a Sky Knight. And yeah, next turn we could already present lethal with Counterspell Backup. Opponent discarding Runa. Not really gonna help them too much here. They need removal or flying creatures. Repossession the Drake. Um, this would gain them two life. I think it's fine, make them spend the mana casting Drake and encounter it. And draw more with Wrath. Yeah, this is disgusting. And the next turn, if I activate Raf, three, four, is seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So they should be dead. I mean, this would be pretty rude to cast, so we'll let them have it. But yeah, I could counter it if I wanted to. All right. Activate Raph. Send in the team and list, and that should be game. Even if they gain one more. GG. Awesome. So your opponents definitely look like a dedicated defender's deck. Which yeah, can be a very solid strategy if you're not facing any flying creatures. But unfortunately for them, we had a few of those. So yeah, we got to seven wins with our blue-white double Wrath deck. And Wrath was incredibly impressive, so I think deservingly one of the best uncommon legends in the set. Well, I think that's uh, gonna wrap things up for today's stream. Time to record some constructed content next. If you're not yet part of the Discord server, make sure to do so either by subscribing on Twitch or becoming a Patreon supporter, where you'll get access to all my tier lists for Limited, as well as being able to vote for which standard decks make it into videos and many more other perks. But yeah, for now, I want to thank everyone for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd. Thank you.